but for some patients, um, it's more appropriate to have a, a mechanical heart valve. And this is the standard uh, mechanical heart valve. You can see the way it works is when the heart beats, these leaflets get vertical. And when the heart relaxes, they get, they, they get horizontal like that. So this, the, the, this valve's been around for a long time. It's a very effective device. Uh, but it requires that you take an anticoagulant medication, whereas the tissue valve, because it's made the way we're made, doesn't require that. Now, um, let me just take a moment to review what we've spoken about, because we've gone a long way from the beginning. This device works extraordinarily hard uh, every moment of every day. And as I mentioned to you, 1,500 gallons of flow go through it every day. Valves facilitate that flow by making sure the flow is in one direction only, in and out, on both sides. When the valves leak, or when they are obstructive, when they're blocked or stenotic, these are all similar words, the heart has to do different kinds of work. And I just want to spend a, a moment giving you a few basic ideas about why the heart doesn't like to have valves that don't work correctly. Uh, and then I'll show you around the room a little bit and we'll go on and do our operations. When the aortic valve is narrowed and stiff, as I mentioned to you, in order to push the same amount of blood throw, flow through it, you need to have a thicker, stiffer heart, just like a weightlifter. If he has to lift a greater weight, eventually he'll develop thicker muscles, except thicker muscles for the heart are bad because the heart gets stiff and can't relax to absorb, to accept the next bunch of blood going into it. It gets um, like a, a weightlifter's arm, uh, strong but inflexible. And the other problem is that the workload of the heart goes way up because it's trying to drive 1,500 gallons a day through a hole that's this big instead of a hole that's this big, let's say. So the purpose of valve replacement surgery for aortic valve disease is to make the hole the size it needs to be for the heart to do the work at a relatively low level of, uh, of energy expenditure. In contrast, just to take another disorder so that you can get an idea of another way that the heart can be bothered by valvular heart disease, but this is not the, I don't want you to think this is a comprehensive discussion, it's not, it's just a way to introduce you to the subject. When the mitral valve leaks, the heart still has to provide you with the standard 1,500 gallons a day, but it might pump another 500 gallons a day into the leak. So in theory, you can think of it as the leak causing the heart to pump 500 gallons in a 24-hour period that just goes back and forth between the lower chamber and the upper chamber on the left side, meanwhile sending 1,500 this way. So a heart like that, instead of pumping 1,500 gallons a day, will be pumping, let's say, 2,000. In that case, the heart gradually enlarges. It gets the space in here gets larger. And therefore, the same amount of muscle cells are working a bigger heart. And that, of course, makes the heart weaker. The same number of muscles working a heart this big, same number of muscle cells working a heart this big, isn't as effective as the same number of, as those muscle cells working a heart that's smaller. So as the heart gets bigger, it generally gets weaker. And so we repair or replace valves. Uh, in the case of mitral valve prolapse, we repair valves to allow the heart not to have to pump that extra 500 gallons, to allow it to, to pump just the standard 1,500, and be able to provide you with extra pumping during those minutes in the day when you're exercising, walking up a hill, etc. So the health of the heart is improved by getting rid of valves that leak or repairing them and getting rid of valves that are stenotic or narrowed. Now the patient we're going to operate on today has a mitral valve that leaks badly and we're going to repair that valve and in addition he's in atrial fibrillation uh, and uh, this is a rhythm that is caused when this upper chamber gets distended because of leakage going into it and that distension changes the way the electrical activity of the heart functions and it somewhat disorganizes the electrical activity of the heart and the maze operation is an operation that's designed to restore 
the normal electrical function of the heart or something closer to the normal electrical um, activation of the heart. And that's the procedure that we're going to perform today. And I don't want to go into too much detail about that at the present time because it's not worth doing. But I thought you might um, be interested in just looking around a little bit in a cardiac surgery operating room if you have not had the uh, pleasure of being in one before. A uh, few moments have gone by now, so I've got my mask on because uh, my partner is just starting this operation, which we're going to do together in a f uh, as soon as we get done talking here. But I thought it would be interesting for you to look around the room and see what a cardiac operating room looks like. Um, again, largely because reality is often less bothersome than, uh, than uh, one's fantasy about these things. And you'll see that it's a, uh, cardiac surgery is not something that's done by cardiac surgeons. It's something that's done by a dedicated team of people who are very specifically focused on giving a, a great performance, if you will. Uh, surgery is a performance art, and it's a team performance. Anesthesia has to perform, and, and um, uh, the perfusionists, the nurses, the surgeons, all working in concert to get the job done. So let me just walk you through the room a little bit. As the, if the camera can look across the room, you'll see this device right here is the cardiopulmonary bypass machine and it supports the patient's circulation by pumping blood for him when the heart stopped and we're working inside it to fix those valves. And it looks very complicated, and in some ways it is, um, but it's a, uh, a highly evolved technology that was uh, first worked out, the, the primitive versions of it in the middle 50s, and is now a very, very advanced, very safe technology. And across here you'll see the instruments and our scrub nurses and circulating nurses who are taking care of the patient and uh, passing instruments to the surgeon. And then, of course, a little to the left here, um, you can see the, uh, the two surgeons that are working. And at the head of the table, our anesthesiologist, who's protecting the patient, controlling his um, uh, ventilation and keeping him safely asleep while we prepare for this operation. In the background, you'll see a couple of screens. One of these screens is showing an echocardiographic picture of the heart so that we can understand what's wrong with the valves. And the other screen is keeping eye on his uh, blood pressure, his pulse rate, and his ventilation, his breathing, so that we know uh, he's safe while we're working. So now that you have an idea what the room looks like, we'll go ahead and do this operation. And uh, perhaps uh, you will have benefited by getting to see in real time uh, what a cardiac uh, operating suite looks like and learning some of the basics of uh, a valvular heart surgery. Make sure that in your own specific instance, you talk to somebody you trust and like who can give you accurate, precise information about your situation. Thank you.